Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I can't hear, I can't hear no one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you give me another one so I can be satisfied before we begin, inshallah? I, I, I need to see some energy, yeah? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa silli amri, wahlul uqdatan min lisan yafqahu qawli, subhanaka la ilma lana, illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alimu al-hakim. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, in 2013 or 2014, I had a bag similar to this. I had a bag similar to this. And we had a conference similar to this. Myself and my colleagues were in Mindanao. We went to several cities and we ended up in Manila. And in Manila, when we landed, the brothers who picked us up, took us in the car, took our luggage, and including what? Including what? my backpack and my backpack usually is the most important because it has my laptop and other documents and stuff so I had it with me we arrived to the restaurant to have some lunch that's what they told us and when we are around brothers and sisters volunteers and all that we trust whatever they say because they are the locals they know better right right yes so the brother parked the car and I asked him can I leave my bag here? Is it safe? He said, yeah, yeah, brother, brother, it's very safe. And he said, look, look how many soldiers are over there, security guards, look, look, look how many. And CCTV cameras, look how many. So I had no issues to leave my bag with very important stuff in it, including money, by the way, credit cards, IDs, whatever else you can think of. My iPad, everything was in this backpack. 20 minutes, 20 minutes later, we had lunch and I went out and I saw the brother, the driver, may Allah bless him, coming almost in tears, saying, brother, somebody break in the car and he took all the bags. He took all the bags, he, take, he took all the bags, including my backpack, yes, which has my laptop, my work. Yes, my iPad, yes, my cash, yes, and worst of all, my passport. My passport was gone, and I remember vividly, those who, is there anyone here remember this story? Raise up your hand if you remember those story, we have Star Habiba, mashallah. Very few people remember this story now, because it's a bit old. The old team, they know exactly what happened. So I didn't have my passport. And my flight back home was tomorrow, was the next day. Don't you dare touch my bag. <laughs> so what happened? The bag was gone, the passport was gone. Whatever valuable items were in that bag wasn't really as important as your travel document, right or wrong? My wife, may Allah bless her, because she is maybe smarter, she took a bag, specific bag, which has all the passports. See? And she didn't have a problem. So they all have to travel and I got stuck in the Philippines. For how long? Anyone remember? Four months, I think, approximately four months. A dear friend of mine, who doesn't want to be mentioned, I believe, he accommodated me in his home. And Allah opened doors for da'wah and we witnessed so many people coming to Islam. Yani Allah has a reason for things to happen the way they happen, right? But why am I telling you this story? Because that very night, before coming on the stage to deliver my lecture, the, the, the theme of the lecture was contentment. But I was so distressed. I was so sad I lost my stuff. How will I come now on the stage and tell the, tell the people, Hey, be content about the destiny and the qadr of Allah, right? Worst, I was in the bathroom getting ready and I have my jeans on, my pants on. 
And I was searching my pants and I found the notes of that lecture. Contentment. And the first thing was, be happy with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it is good or whatever may seem bad. And I say, like, how in the world will I go on the stage and deliver such a lecture? I'm still internally angry, right? Will anyone here be okay with this? Guys, answer me, otherwise I will. <laughs> yeah? Will there be anyone happy losing this stuff? No, you'll be angry. We are human beings, right? And then somebody I met in the lobby later on, he pat my shoulder and like, you know, condoling me. He said, be patient. Be patient, brother. So I reflected over this and I said, we always teach about patience and perseverance and so on. How did I reach to that level of anger and sadness that I lost position of that sort, including my passport? I'm not going back home with my family. I'm stuck. How could I not relate all of this to Islam? You know, I start reflecting. Some of you maybe know that I was also injured recently, two years ago, and I was on, on a wheelchair for, for a, almost a year. And during this time, you know, I would shout, I would scream, and my wife would tell me, shh, the neighbors. You know? And I would be like, come on, I'm in too much pain. I would scream, she would say, shh, the neighbors. I remember, I'm not sure if she remembers, but one night I was holding her hand and I was squeezing it because I'm in pain. And she was screaming too because I squeezed so hard. So when she screamed, I said, shh, <laughs> the neighbors. Meaning, be patient, man. This is my topic, my brothers and sisters in Islam, inspired by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as-sabur, the patient one. Raise up your hand, my brothers and sisters, if you have never ever sinned in your life. Raise up your hand. I need to see some angels. Yeah. <laughs> Any angels in the room, please? Raise up your hand. All right. I want to ask you, and I don't want to see hands, okay? But I want you to giggle. Okay, okay. Yeah, so giggling will give an indication that you are part of that crime, okay? How many of you guys have backbitten people? Before. Yalla, giggle. Giggle. Yeah, otherwise, you're a liar. You know? <laughs> it's the worst crime. How many of you have gossiped people today? <laughs> how many people, how many people have actually uttered bad language today? <laughs> right? May Allah protect us all. Yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as-sabur, didn't punish you immediately. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not punish you immediately. If you committed a crime today, if you steal from somebody, if you break the law, if you raped somebody, may Allah protect us all. If you murdered somebody, will you go to the court and say, sorry, Shaykh, yani, forgive me, I will not do that again. Will you go, will, will the court let go of your crimes or will you be punished immediately? You will be punished immediately. You will end up paying the price of your crime. True or false? Answer me, Philippines. True or false? But not with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you time and time again to reflect over your crimes, over your sins, and asking you to return to turn back to him in repentance and ask for his forgiveness. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to punish you immediately after every sin, all of us would have been doomed by then. True or false? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us connected with Allah as-sabur, appreciating that Allah is giving us yet another breath in this time, in this life, so that we can, inshallah ta'ala, end up in a better place. How many times, my sisters, my brothers in Islam, how many of you here are reverts to Islam? How many of you have taken their shahada some times ago? Raise up your hand. Don't be shy. This is not haram, yani, to raise up your hand. Okay. How, how many of you have worshipped other than Allah before your shahada? 
How many of you were Christians worshiping other than Allah before your shahada, before coming to Islam? Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed you maybe to attend events like this or to meet people who would invite you to Islam. You heard the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah opened your heart and you declared your faith in Islam. How many people do you know who died without this blessing? Right? And how many times you reflected over the shahada, but then you delayed because you love my boy. <laughs> right? You didn't want to become a Muslim because my boy is so tasty. Especially the crunchy one, they tell me, you know. <laughs> May Allah protect us all, Ya Rabb. But yet Allah as sabur the patient one, He had given you opportunity to listen to the words of Allah, not only to accept it, but to follow all these restrictions and laws, including not eating baboy. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, we titled the theme of this event, AI, Allah is. Allah, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is never, is never artificial. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not an abstract thing that we hear about and not really to feel it in our hearts and see it in the hereafter in Jannah. We speak a lot about Jannah. We speak a lot about the hereafter. But some of us, they think that these stories are just abstract. We don't feel it. Why? Because we're drowned in this dunya. We're not patient enough. We don't want to adapt the name of Allah as sabur to ourselves and be patient on worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hatta ya'tiyaka al-yaqeen until death reaches us. Until we depart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, worship Allah until this very moment. We don't have patience anymore. We prefer to watch movies, listen to songs, go for parties, having fun, you guys, mashallah, tabarakallah, in the Philippines, you eat five times a day. So many meriendas, mashallah. I remember, I remember. <laughs> Sorry, I will expose some friends. Sorry. But I remember we were eating pizza. How many of you loves pizza? Raise up your hand if you love pizza. Allahu Akbar. Who doesn't love it? Huh? Everybody loves it. Like, if I invite you for pizza now, what would you say? Would you say, no, thank you, I don't want to I... Filipinos, they don't lie. Come eat with me. Yes, brother. <laughs> Not only that, Allah, one day we were inviting like four people. Yani, we invited four people to eat pizza. And as we were walking on the road, I heard some brother calling some neighbors. Uh, pizza na, come in. We kain na, kain na pizza na, come in. And by the time we reached the pizza restaurant, there were about 40 people behind me. <laughs> May Allah protect us. But the, the lesson is, my brothers and sisters, Allah is not an abstract. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also super intelligent. The intelligence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surpasses any intelligence that you may think of. Sometimes we ask Allah questions that we shouldn't ask. Because we think that we are smart enough to ask those questions. We just came from Umrah, alhamdulillah. We visited the, the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We visited Mecca al-Mukarramah. We visited the Kaaba. And by the way, wallahi, 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 I made dua for everyone who would attend this gathering. I made dua in the Kaaba for you. And in the Kaaba, what do we do? We come to the black stone and we do what? What do we do at the black stone? We say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and then we, we kiss the black stone. No, you tell me one intelligent reason why do we kiss a stone. Yalla, anyone? If you answer correctly, inshallah ta'ala, I'm not going to give you anything because I have nothing at the moment. I just landed, I have nothing. <laughs> yeah, why do we kiss the black stone? Any brothers here, please? Brothers, you're, mashallah, tabarakallah, very polite, looking at me. As if we are in a classroom. <laughs> Come on, brothers, wake up, man. Why do we kiss the black stone? Huh, sister? Uh, I believe yes. Torture, the 
You believe what, sorry? She believed that she, you know, when you kiss, you're embracing the Ummah of Muhammad. Can I, can I, can I tell you the correct answer? Yeah. What you said is wrong. <laughs> this is number one. It's okay to be wrong. I like that bravery. It's okay to be wrong. That's why we're here to learn from each other. Beautiful. Anyone wanted to make another attempt? Any sheikh from the brothers? Yes, brother. The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Full stop. This is how he did it. And because we have full trust in him, we do it too. Now, how many of you have visited the Kaaba? Raise up your hand, guys. Don't be shy. I will not like, you know, punish you if you didn't. La hawla la quwwata illa billah. All right. Those who visited the Kaaba, how many of you were elbow, elbowed by somebody? <laughs> yes. I was with my wife. My wife is a Filipino, which means she is a little bit, you know, like, yeah, and I don't want to say short, but she's okay. <laughs> I was holding her uh, afraid because the pushing was so hard. And then there is a sister in front of us. Allah had given her, her more health, mashallah, than my wife, even more than me. And because we are pushed from the back, unintentionally you touch each other. So my wife touched that lady and then this lady turned to her and she did exactly that. Because I was, I'm tall, so I can see her from there. She did like this. Mm. <laughs> All like that, what she did. Now, can you imagine if this happened to you in the LRT here? What will you do? Yalla. What will you do, brother? If somebody elbowed you in LRT, in the crowd, you're going to work. You know, the lines, the lines of LRT is four or five train stations away. People line up for one, you know, station, four stations away. It's better to walk, man. Have you seen the crowd at the LR, LRT stations? It's Janaza there. Janaza there. Wallah, it's terrible. Some, some brothers wanted to take me there. I said, I don't have that much patience. No sabr for me, you know. But if somebody did it to you, if somebody elbowed you, intentionally looking at you in the face, hitting you in your body, how would you react? You will push back. You might fight back, true? But in front of the Kaaba, what would you do? Asaba, Allahu Akbar. Look at this. And somebody elbowed you in front of the Kaaba and said, Labbaik Allahumma. <laughs> right or wrong, guys? Talk to me. Allah is not just intelligent, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the attributes which are so perfect that no one can match it. So when we say, for example, Allah is Rahman, Allah is merciful, and there is other person in the community who is merciful, who likes to give charity and all that. The mercy of that brother is nothing compared to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can never be compared to the generosity of any man who is charitable by nature. That's why no one can take the name of Allah to himself. Yani I cannot name myself al Karim. I cannot put in Arabic, there is a definite article, Alif and Lam, which is the, the most generous. I cannot name myself al Karim without adding a prefix. What is the prefix? Abdul Karim, the slave of the most generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said in the Quran, أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبْلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ Have they not looked, have they not observed the creation of camels? Now can I give you a homework? Guys, can I give you a homework? If you said no, there's no punishment. Just talk to me. I am on heavy medication. I need to feel like I'm awake. So talk to me, all right? So... Your homework is to go and discover the beauty and the magnificent creation of the camels. Because sometimes non-Muslims will come and read these verses and say, but what is so special about the camels? Right? If you don't know, then you will not appreciate why Allah mentioned the camel in the Quran. 
And have you not observed how the sky were fixed up high, were raised up high by an intelligent being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ila al-jibali kayfa nusibat. And the mountains, how they were fixed in the, on the earth. And that what we see from the surface of the earth, what we see, what we observe about the mountains from the surface of the earth is nothing compared to the pigs, compared to the foundations beneath the earth of that same mountain, Allahu Akbar. Have you not considered? And have you not seen the earth, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spread it out for you to walk easily, to drive easily, although the earth is what? Allahu Akbar. But Allah made it flat to you, so you can walk on it. Allahu Akbar. Look at this. That's the intelligent being that we are inviting people to. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, how many of you in the past one month, please raise up your hand, in the past, in the past one month alone have faced a tragedy or a challenge or a trial in life? Raise up your hand if you have faced something of that sort in the past one month. Only three? You guys have no poverty here? <laughs> Brothers, nothing, no one, no, look, look at this. Only three, four, mashallah, tabarakallah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Guys, are you shy to say that? We're not paying you money. Like, we're not paying you money. <laughs> but how many of you, many of us have faced some challenges in life? How many of you? have actually responded to those challenges with patience, with perseverance, with faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that things will turn to your favor by Allah's permission. May Allah make us among those people. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised something in the Quran that you must learn. Maybe all of us know it. But sometimes life will take us away from that which is essential. Do you agree? Do you agree? That sometimes life will take us away. For example, you want to pray, but there is something else worldly that you are doing. Like maybe selling food. And the customers are around. And the cash are beautiful. But there is something on the other side called Adhan. Say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then part of that Adhan is what? Come to prayer. And the next, come to success, man. Money will not grant you success if you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This money will be a niqmah, will be actually an evil thing for you and against you on the day of judgment. Because the provision that Allah had given you through businesses, through this and that, is His, is not yours. It's not yours. Allah is just giving you something so that you can give something back in return. And all what Allah needs from you, all what Allah wants from you is to worship Him on His terms, not on yours. Don't ever come and say, brother, God is in my heart. No, He's not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, سَبِّحِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ ال Al-A'la, Allah is the most high. Don't ever say something that Allah never mentioned about Himself. Don't describe Allah in terms that He didn't describe. Some people say Allah is love, right? Some people say Allah or God is love. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, in Islam is the source of love. Al-Wadud. Anything, any emotion that you have towards somebody, toward your country, toward, toward your child, that love that we call it love, is nothing compared to the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for His creation. And that's why as sabur is one of the qualities that we all need to adapt to ourselves. That when something happens, when something goes wrong, we need to swallow that pain. And take a deep breath. And take that elbow. <laughs> deep inside. And say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are sabirin. May Allah make us among those who are patient. Because Allah said in the Quran, Inna Allah ma'a. Inna Allah ma'a. Allah is with those who are patient. And when Allah said that, when Allah said that He is with those 
who are patient, that doesn't mean that Allah is going to walk with you on, this, you know, on the street. But rather Allah will be guiding you. Allah will be opening doors for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ Indeed, most certainly, we are going to test you. We are going to give you trials and tribulations. What are these types of tests that Allah mentioned in this ayah? min al khawf. We will give you just a little bit of fear. Not all fear. Wallahi, this ayah, even though it is talking about tests and trials and tribulations, is one of the most hopeful ayah that the Muslims should hold on to. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters in Islam, when I was on a wheelchair, that ayah broke me up. That ayah was the ayah that made me think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a deeper level. Because Allah is not saying that I shall test you with all the fear that I can give to human beings. No, he say, in something, a little bit of fear. fil amwal, and a little bit of loss of wealth. Wal amfus, and souls, people die. Our parents, our mothers, our fathers, our children, our husbands, our wives, they die. This is part of life. My brothers and sisters in Islam, in Palestine, the land of Izzah, the land of pride, the land in which its people taught us what Iman looked like. This is the land in which its people in Gaza, in Palestine, taught us here in Philippines, and around the world, Muslims and non-Muslims alike are looking at the people and say, what in the world had happened in the hearts of those people to behave in such a manner that no one, none of us will bear. None of us will bear losing four or five children at once just like that. How many of us can even imagine this to happen to them? Wallahi zero. And that's why we're not there. That's why we're not there because we can't. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah will not burden you with any test, with any trials except with that that you can bear. So don't come and tell me brother I can't. Don't tell me that. It's not about that you can't. It's just you don't accept. When I was on a wheelchair I refused the fact that I would continue my life on a wheelchair. And that's why I had my misery doubled. The pain of the, the, the physical pain that I was going through, but also the mental pain that I don't accept the condition I'm in. But once I accepted it, wallahi, believe it or not, the pain was subsided. So Allah said, that He will test you with all these things. And fruits, maybe less food, less provision. But then Allah told us at the end, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And give good news, glad tidings to those who are patient. Those who, when they are strike with calamities, they say what? إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ We belong to Allah. All of you, my brothers and sisters, belong to Allah. You are the commodity, the product, the creation of Allah. He owns you. And at the end of this dunya, we are returning back to Allah. The question is, will you return to Allah with patience, perseverance, and contentment? Or, or, you, or are you going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despondent and unhappy with the qadr that He destined for you? That's the question that you should ask yourself. Where am I in this? Am I in that category of the patient ones that will receive the good news that Allah mentioned in the Quran? Or I will be among the despondent people. May Allah protect us all. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We belong to Allah and to Him we shall return. A woman have lost her husband. And the Prophet ﷺ was passing by the graveyard and he saw her wailing and crying and complaining. Have you ever seen people say, why me? Have you guys here seen those people? Why me? Why have you taken him? He's too young. Did you hear that before? 
Why did you take him? Ya Allah, he was so good. As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is lacking wisdom. May Allah protect us all. May Allah protect us all. When I was on wheelchair again, I'm bringing this again and again because I have learned too many lessons sitting on that wheelchair for a year. One of them is that if Allah had taken the, my mobility, the ability of walking, if Allah had taken that, that's belong to Him. If I am belong to Allah in totality, what is it about my legs that I'm worried so much about? Another thing is that Allah had given you too much. You are just focused on the things that you've lost. You don't count your blessings, but you are complaining about your trials. As sabur is a quality and all the qualities of Allah that you will hear about today is something that Allah is expecting you to adapt and to put into action. How many of you here are angry birds? Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. Show me. Don't be shy. Mufti Mink is not here. Yeah, show me your hand. Show me your hands. Angry birds. I can't see yet. La la la. Your boys, men, none of them, only one. You're liars, Allah. Angry birds, raise up your hand. Those who get agitated quickly, raise up your hand. Don't worry, we are not exposing your sins here. I, I sometimes get angry. Easy. We're human beings, right? The Prophet got angry many times. But it's an art for you to respond to your anger. When the Prophet ﷺ became angry, his face turned into red and a vein appeared into his forehead. That's how the Prophet ﷺ shows or demonstrated his anger. But our anger, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajan. Have you seen your husband angry before, sisters? Those who are married, can you raise up your hand? Those who are married, married sisters. Have you seen your husband getting angry before? How many of you have, <laughs> were terrified? Like, is this the man that I told him I do? <laughs> I don't, you know. <laughs> like this guy, no, he looks different. <laughs> May Allah protect us all. But the point is that sometimes we get into those situations where we need to calm down in order to resolve a problem. True or false? My brothers and sisters in Islam, what, what our brothers and sisters in Palestine are going through is something, as I mentioned earlier, is unimaginable. True? But wallahi, the patience and the perseverance that these people have displayed is something that we must learn from. If this issue, the latest problem that our brothers and sisters are facing, the latest one, this is very special by the way. This is very special and I have a faith in my heart. I have a belief that Allah had prolonged it for a very important reason. Because Allah will filter those who are upon the truth and those who are yo-yo, yo-yo Muslims. You know? You know what's yo-yo? Sometimes there, sometimes not anymore. Sometimes Ramadani Muslims, after Ramadan, khalas. Sometimes uh, Jum'ah Muslim, yes, everybody in the masjid. The Asr in the same Jum'ah, nobody's there. Maghrib, the same Jum'ah, nobody's there. Barely one line. Yo-yo Muslims. Allah is filtering them. Because Palestine, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is not a political problem. It's a religious issue. It is a matter of aqeedah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Baytul Maqdis, mentioned the Al-Aqsa Masjid in the Quran. He said that it's a blessed place, not only that, but all its surrounding. It's a blessed place. And most of the scholars said the surrounding is the entire Palestine. So it's not simply a political issue. It's a religious duty upon every Muslim to show sympathy, empathy, and patience. Demonstrate patience. Don't ever say why Allah is doing this to them. My brothers and sisters in Islam, the shuhada of Palestine are in Jannah, inshallah. Why should we be sad? Yes, we are sad because the images are horrible. Right? The images that comes on the internet are horrible. We can't bear looking at them sometimes. But wallahi, the Prophet wasallam said that at the time of their death, the agony of death that we will all go through is like just a bite of mosquito for them. Despite how horrible the image is, don't be sad. Don't be... Sh the sadness, of course, is natural, you know, emotion, but don't ever feel that Allah is punishing them. The, less, the, the, the question is, what have we done? 
while seeing all this? Have we supported them? Have we boycotted these products and these brands that are supporting the enemies? Have we looked for reputable organizations to donate necessity, necessities because 90% of the population in Palestine suffers from hunger? 90%! Can you imagine? And by the way, when hunger strikes, crimes follow. When hunger strikes, people turn against each other. We don't want to see our Palestinian brothers and sisters in Islam who taught us faith and resilience we don't want to see them turning against each other. We want our patience to be in, in terms of dua. That's number one by default. But don't only say, I have nothing but dua, brother. No, wallahi, whoever taught you this doesn't understand Islam. Dua is by default part of our lives. At dua huwa al-ibadah, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. Dua is the essence of ibadah. So by default, you should be doing dua every day for them. That's one thing. But have you donated to reputable organizations? Have you protested to show your solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Islam? Have you sent letters after letters after letters to your governmental offices to put pressure on them to bring an awareness about this issue? These are the things that we need to do and that requires patience. You know, Antara is a, an imaginary figure in the Arab world, Antara ibn Shaddad. They said that Antara ibn Shaddad was one of the men who is very brave, can defeat an army by, by himself. One day a man told him, what is the secret of your patience? So he gave him an example. He said, okay, put your finger in my mouth. And I will put my finger in your mouth. And on three, two, one, let's bite each other. All right, so okay, three, two, one. They start biting each other so hard, the man starts screaming. He said, oh, he couldn't bear the, the pain. Then Antara told him, if you have waited a little bit longer, I would have screamed just like you. That's patience, is to wait a little bit longer than usual. The moment you say, I have had enough, I've been patient for too long, you didn't understand patience. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned, المؤمن, How amazing and strange the condition of a true believer. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them provision, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them goodness, they are thankful and grateful and they give all the credits to Allah by saying, Alhamdulillah. But when calamities strike them, they are patient. And it is good for them. In both conditions, the believers should be appreciative of the goodness and the provision that Allah is giving us day and night, but at the same time patient when we are facing troubles. I want to also mention something. The second name that I want to discuss quickly, inshallah, is Al-Muntaqim. Who can translate Al-Muntaqim to me? Anyone? What is Al-Muntaqim, sister? Raise your hand. Uh, raise up your voice. I can't hear anything. If you heard, can you? The Avenger. Or the one who revenged. The one who takes revenge, right? I didn't want to use that term. I actually, I was planning to ask Dr. Muhammad Salah what's the best translation. But actually the one who puts you into account and punishment as a result of your crimes. So those, my brothers and sisters in Islam, who are wronged in Palestine, who've been bombarded for the past 80 years almost. Don't ever think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will just let go and let go the criminals without punishment, without taking them to account. I heard Dr. Muhammad Salah was quoting a hadith where the Prophet sallallahu said that sometimes Allah will give time to those people whom he is angry with. He will give them more. Until one day, he will get hold of them and he will never let them go. Meaning, he will punish them forever. So have that faith, my brothers and sisters, and stand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is observing what is happening. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting each of us into that test 
So we don't want to forget about the issue of Palestine. We don't want to forget that. Let a day pass by without teaching and raising awareness about the issue. Now the entire Muslim community as well as the non-Muslim communities are awake. They are finally awake. They have seen the reality, the truth. So we don't want, be to, we don't want the Muslims to be in the, the last to respond. We should be in the front lines always. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from one and all. A reminder, Fir'aun, how many of you know Fir'aun? Pharaohs, yeah? Are there any non-Muslims in the audience just to, we have, can, can I see some hands? Don't worry, we will not chop up your heads. We have, mashallah, some. Do we have some more brothers? Any brothers? Mashallah, I recognize that from the, the first time I enter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's my dua for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open your heart to Islam. Say Ameen. Ameen. Pharaoh had punished an entire nation. He killed the people. He subjugated their women. He slaughtered the children. He gave Musa alayhi salam so hard time. And every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a sign to Fir'aun that Musa is bringing you to Islam. But he was so arrogant. He said, Look at his arrogance. His arrogance took him to a place where he said that I am your Lord, the Most High. Look at his arrogance. And Allah gave him time after time, year after year, sign after sign until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sealed the deal. Why did I mention non-Muslims in the audience? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you an opportunity after an opportunity. If you realize that this is the truth, grab it quickly. Wallahi, this is a sincere advice. We are not here to make people Muslims or non-Muslims. Allah alone knows. But if you are here for a reason to learn or to take that step, do not delay it, my brothers. Do not delay it, my sisters. Because at one point, Allah will seal on your heart, on your hearing, on your eyesight, and you will never return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will seal the deal. And that's exactly what happened to Fir'aun. After so many years have been given to him to turn to Allah, as sabur he was so patient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the crimes committed by Fir'aun, yet he did not return. He didn't turn to Allah, he didn't accept the truth. Until one day, Allah the Avengers or the Revenger had took hold of him and drowned him and all those who followed him. Now, some may ask, why all those who were with him also were drowned? Why is that so? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Inna Fir'auna wa Hamana wa junoodahuma kanu khati'een. That Fir'aun, the head of the state, wa Haman, the right hand, and the soldiers under the authority, all of them are on the same scale, all of them were wrong. Because if a soldier realized the truth, he must stand for it. Even if it is against himself. Even if it will take him to troubles in this dunya. Yusuf alayhi salam, he was the most handsome person that you can even think of. He has been given half of the beauty of this universe according to one narration. And a lady who is of equal beauty seduced him to do haram. And he said what? قَالَ رَبِّ السِّجْنُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا يَدْعُونَنِي إِلَيَّ Ya Allah, bear witness that prison, jail is more beloved to my heart than what they are inviting me to do. Some scholars said nine years in jail unjustly, Yusuf السلام, was locked because of his dignity, because he stood for the truth. And this is what we need to do. This is what we need to have. Number one is patience, perseverance. And number two, remember, Allah is just, Allah is adl, and He will get hold of the offenders one day in the light time. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, it's always lovely to be in the Philippines. We will come back, inshallah, with an unplugged session. We call it unplugged session. It's unplanned conversation between myself and the mashayikh. Jazakumullahu khairan. May Allah bless you. I love you all for the sake of Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He gathered us today, may He gather us 
once again inshallah with al-habib muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in jannatul firdaus